Hi, I'm Taya Gurken with Peghead Nation, and today I want to give a little overview of the Shub C1 capo as well as their Fine Tune capo, which are the two capos that Shub makes for a standard steel string guitar. So the C1 is, of course, the standard Shub design. It's been around for almost 50 years. Um, they've sold more than a million of this capo. Uh, so good chance you've come across these. Uh, but it has uh, seen a few little tweaks and revisions over the years. Uh, and I do get questions from time to time on how to put these on the guitar. So I thought I'd give a, a little overview and just kind of revisit the design for a moment. Like all the Shub capos before, it uses a very cool clamping mechanism that is somewhat inspired by the way vice grip pliers work. And there's a little adjustment screw on the back. And uh, I think some of the questions on how to install this sometimes come uh, down to whether you adjust the tension after the capo is on the neck or before. And the answer is you sort of do it uh, before. Um, if the capo is very loose, let's say I'm starting with it um, in the largest position here and it's uh, just too loose on the guitar, the strings won't be clamped all the way down. You just incrementally try to go a little bit tighter and I've done this for 30 years, so I'm very quick at it. If you, if you do it too much, and it just becomes like uh, it takes too much tension to push down, you just back off a little bit. And you want to install the cable right behind a fret. Uh, that's how you're going to get the least buzz and the best uh, the tuning uh, stability. And uh, you just pop it on. Then you feel like it's a little too tight. You might want to back off just a little bit because you don't want to over tighten it and pull the strings out of tune. And the great thing is, once it's adjusted like that, you can move it around to different parts of the neck without readjusting the tension. Unless your neck has a severe taper, which most guitars don't, um, once you set it, you can basically forget about it. And uh, as you use this capo uh, a lot, you'll just get used to making little micro adjustments just as you're putting it on. The other question I get a lot is, do you put it on from the top? or from the bottom? And the answer to that is there really isn't a right uh, way to do it. I've always done it from the top. Some people like to do it from the bottom because they feel like they can clamp the uh, clamp nicely with their thumb, do it like that. Uh, on some necks, you can also use these as a partial capo and only cover the uh, top five strings. Leave your bottom string free for um, sort of uh, alternate tuning effects, uh, but really, uh, I would just experiment and see which way you prefer, whether you go from the top or from the bottom with these capos. A few more general things about the C1. Um, the rubber that it uses is a silicone rubber, and it, to me, it has just the right amount of softness to really grip the strings. There are some capos that I've used where if you're bending strings, especially in the first position, the string is going to slip under the, uh, the padding of the capo and then come back, not quite in the position that you had it before. That's not good, because it's going to get you out of tune. I've never had that problem with a Shub capo, and uh, that, to me, is um, one of the strongest features for me personally using a Shub, is that ability to keep the string and grab it, even if I'm bending in the first position. Um, I've also, I, I have Shub capos that I've had for more than 20 years. They've been bouncing around my guitar cases and gig bags, and um, the rubber continues to be soft. You can get replacement rubbers for these, uh, but I have never needed uh, to replace mine. I have had other capos, uh, other brands' capos, where the rubber, after a few years, got really hard and plasticky, and um, neither push down the strings the way they should, nor protected the neck on the other end the way that I think it should protect the neck. So um, just really a wonderful design. Um, the current version of the Shub Capo uses a little roller mechanism um, on the, uh, uh, as part of the clamp. Um, the original Shub um, had just a little sort of nylon cap. I think it might have been a material called Delrin on the other side of the screw. The roller became an option with the Shub deluxe capo that was out for a while. Now it's just part of the standard C1, and it has just made the capo even smoother to operate and possibly more tuning uh, stable because of it. So a great design. Um, besides this standard chrome version, uh, there's also now a black version called the Capo Noir. Looks very cool. There's a gold version of this called the Capo Royale. And there's a very cool version now called the Power Pearl, which has sort of a uh, multicolored reflecting uh, metal portion and uh, 
almost like a shell colored padding uh, option of this. So that's a very extravagant looking version of this capo. Um, and there's also a light version of this, which is made out of aluminum and it weighs um, almost half uh, the weight of a standard capo. So for some guitars um, where uh, having the extra weight on the neck might be an issue, those are definitely worth checking out. And it's also worth mentioning that the standard shub design is of course also available for other instruments. You can get this for your banjo, mandolin, or ukulele and uh, it's just such a great proven design so highly recommend it I've used these for like I said 30 some years and uh, uh, some of my original ones that I bought way back then are still in use so um, that's the uh, shop C1 now the shop fine tune is a newer design for shop it's now been out for several years as well but it hasn't been around as long as the original shop c1 um, it uses a more traditional capo design it's a yoke design that goes around the uh, the neck and uh, the uh, bar that holds down the strings folds over there's a very nice little spring um, uh, spring loaded uh, receptacle for it here and uh, very smooth uh, screw operation to tighten the capo. Again, as with the other capo, you could put it on either way with the opening on the top or the bottom. I find doing it on the top is a lot is easier. Now with this, you do adjust the tension after the capo is on the on the guitar. So uh, you would pop it on, place it right behind the uh, fret. I usually hold it down, uh, hold the front down with my um, index and middle finger and tighten the screw on the back um, until you get the desired tension uh, and you can tell very easily uh, you can experiment a little bit until you get used to it um, there's the tension for this guitar your neck shape and your fret height and the gauge strings you're using is going to affect what is right for your guitar and the cool thing is that there are some numbers on the back of this little uh, thumb wheel here in my case I'm on the two and uh, that gives me the tension that I need now the nice thing about this yoke design um, is that the tension comes right from the center of the neck and so I find these designs to be extremely tuning stable also because you can really totally fine-tune the tension to be just exactly right with the capo on the instrument um, so um, I've been using one of these uh, some on this guitar as well as on my national guitar which I use heavier strings on and it works just great on that the other thing is that you can park these behind the nut you just put them right there behind the nut put a little bit of tension on there not too much to pull the strings out of tune and this is what of course a lot of bluegrass guitarists like to do if you're changing keys a lot you need your capo really handy you don't want to have to reach in your pocket to grab it this is great you just park it up there and uh, when you're ready to go you just move it now this is the standard um, fine tune f1 capo on this guitar which has a fairly wide neck I can go up to about the fifth fret uh, they make a wider version it's called the F3 so if you have a vintage guitar or a guitar like this that has a fairly wide string spacing you might want to get the wider one just so that you can get up um, past uh, past say the fifth fret or whichever uh, fret your neck width allows so there are two versions of this it's made from stainless steel uses the same kind of rubber silicone material for the padding on both sides of this as the standard shop capo it's a little sleeker in design um, there's some nice little bumpers on both sides that protect the side of the neck as you're uh, uh, sliding it up and down and a beautiful little um, abalone inlay in the uh, in the thumb wheel there um, you may have seen um, our mandolin instructor Joe K Walsh demonstrating this on an octave mandolin so this is not limited to guitar uh, because it is uh, tension through the center if the neck's a little narrower than uh, than the width of the capo it doesn't matter so this works fine on an octave mandolin and would probably work well with uh, a lot of other stringed instruments as well so that's the uh, sharp fine tune um, both this and the C1 are just great capo options and um, in general uh, capo is probably the number one accessory that guitarists uh, should have in their uh, in their gig bag whether you want to change keys uh, on the fly of course um, or you're more comfortable playing in certain keys whether you want to make the guitar easier to play 
when you're practicing difficult material by uh, making the frets be a little closer together by capering high. I do that a lot when I'm practicing at home. And of course, there's some music, like Here Comes the Sun, which I was playing in the beginning of this demo, that just don't sound right without a capo. You really uh, kind of open up the uh, musicality of the instrument, and a uh, capo can give you a lot of creative options and really add to the tonal palette that you can have with different open strings by using a capo. And uh, so uh, whether you're actually using it to move into different keys or just to get a different tonality um, for variety's sake, uh, definitely worth checking out. And uh, these are a couple of the best uh, capos that you can find today.